Before we get started, you should know this is an optional lesson. If you have a tuner or tuning app and you're comfortable using it, then you don't need to learn how to tune your guitar with reference pitches right now, so feel free to skip ahead to the next video on how to navigate your fretboard. That said, using reference pitches is the traditional way of tuning instruments, and it's definitely worth knowing, so for the sake of thoroughness, I've included it in this course. Now let's get to it. To tune your guitar with reference pitches, you're going to listen to a known pitch and then adjust your string tension to match that pitch. In classical music, this is usually done to the note C on the piano where the whole symphony orchestra will tune up to the piano before a concert. Less commonly, when playing popular music with other guitarists, you might do this with your E strings if no one has a tuner with them. But typically, the reason you're going to use reference pitches to tune your guitar is because you're somewhere without your tuner, maybe you forgot it, and you need to get your guitar in tune, and in this case, you're going to use the fifth fret method, which I'll demonstrate now. Now, I'm starting with my guitar in perfect tune from the last video, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to tweak my tuning pegs and make sure that all my strings are slightly out of tune, except for my high E string, which will be my starting reference pitch. All right, do we have an out-of-tune guitar? <laughs> yep, we got an out-of-tune guitar. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tune my low E string to the same pitch as my high E string, since I know that they're the same note, just two octaves apart. This is a bit above your pay grade right now, but according to Google Dictionary, an octave is a series of eight notes occupying the interval between and including two notes, one having twice or half the frequency vibration of the other. Now, like I just said, the low E string and the high E string are two octaves apart, and what this means is that when they're in tune, my low E string will vibrate at precisely one quarter of the frequency that my high E string vibrates at. This is because they're two octaves apart, and half of a half is a quarter. But in layman's terms, what this means is that the pitch of the two strings is the same. They're just lower and higher variations of it, otherwise known as octaves. And so what we need to do is match the pitch of the low E string to the high E string. And to do that, we'll start by playing them both at the same time. These strings are out of tune with each other, and you can hear that because of the clashing vibrations of their pitches, which creates a warbling, out-of-tune sound. When we bring them into tune with each other, that warble will go away. Now, I can hear that the low E string's pitch is a bit flat or too low, so what we need to do is raise its pitch by tightening its tuning peg. To start, I'll pluck both notes at the same time, and then I'll gently tighten while listening for the warbles to go away. Hear how the warbles went away? Now I'll pluck them one more time, just to check. Yep, there we go. No more warbles. So my low E string is now in tune with my high E string, and I can proceed to tune the rest of the guitar using the fifth fret method. To use the fifth fret method, what we're going to do is count up to the fifth fret of the low E string. One, two, three, four, and five. And now I'm going to fret that note and pluck it while simultaneously plucking the A string, which is the next string up. These pitches should match. but they don't. They're out of tune. So what we're going to do is tune the A string by using the note on the fifth fret of the E string as our reference pitch. There we go. That sounds pretty good. So now we'll repeat the process for the D string, which is the next string up. We'll start by counting up to the fifth fret on the A string. One, two, three, four, five, and now we'll pluck that note while simultaneously plucking the D string and adjusting its pitch to match. Once we've done that, we'll repeat the process for the G string by using the 5th fret of the D string to match. So we count up to the 5th fret of the D string, and now we go ahead and pluck that note while simultaneously plucking the G string. There we go. 
Now it's time to tune the B string, and this is where the pattern breaks, so pay attention. When you tune the B string using this method, you only count to the fourth fret of the G string. One, two, three, four. But otherwise the process is the same. We'll pluck that note, the fourth fret of the G string, while simultaneously plucking the B string and then adjusting it to match. And finally, we return to the original pattern and find the fifth fret of the B string, which we use to check the tuning of the high E string. They're a little out of tune. A little bit. Now they're in tune. That's close enough though. Tuning by ear is never as accurate as using a tuner, so you should really only do it in a pinch. Now, time for our final check. Like I said in the last video, the best way to check if your guitar is in tune is to play a chord, and I typically use an E chord, which we're going to learn momentarily in lesson one. Excellent. That sounds awesome. This guitar is in tune and it's ready to play. Now, one last thing. When tuning with reference pitches, it's important to start with a known pitch, or at least one that's close. Your high E string will usually do the trick. If you start with a pitch that's too high, you could strain the neck of your guitar and you might also break a string. So when using reference pitches, it's best to err towards using a pitch that may be a little bit flat rather than too sharp. So that's how you tune your guitar using the 5th fret method. If you broke a string and you need help changing it, or you're looking for more information about anything that I talked about in this lesson, be sure to shoot me a tweet at Mr. Tyler Preston. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video where we'll discuss how to navigate your fretboard.